That gives you a good idea of the airflow over the car. Yeah, while we watch this, obviously Bubba Wallace is able to take over the lead from Johnny Sutter. They're four wide. They are still four wide. It's just a different one of the four. <laughs> That's great action. Ricky Rudd's lucky man. Jeff Gordon, let's see him down there. He makes contact with Sterling Marlin. Well, it doesn't help. <laughs> you know, the risk is that you uh, that you compromise the radiator. You plug up the front grill. You can also get rocks in between the rotor and the caliper, you know, brake system. Obviously, wow. that was a big enough hit to mess up the very front of the car, the splitter. Watch this. Here he comes. Here he comes. Man, it's like... I, I don't know if that... Maybe that hood being up in front of him, maybe he thought he was at the pit road entrance because look how he just turned. Looks like it might have come off of Joe Nemechek's car. You see all these cars going out. They dodge it, but... Ernie Irvin cuts to the right. Mark Martin has to cut square to the right. You want to know how good Mark Martin is? That would have been a big crash if he hadn't reacted, jerked that car onto the grass and around that uh, Ernie Irvin car as he was going off pit road. What a heads up run. Watch him right here. He turns it hard right, right out into the grass and that could have been about a three car pile up there. Well, Mike, you're right. It is Robin Owens. He's a jack man. It hit him in the leg and, and like you said, cut his feet up from under him. He hit his head on the pavement. He is sitting up. He is conscious. He is talking. So he does appear to be okay, but uh, took a pretty hard hit there. But Ryan Blaney had the edge when they went across the stripe. Oh, oh he's going to get loose. And sideways, Ryan Blaney goes. Does he keep it out of the wall? Brushes the back of that truck. Oh. And behind him, he gets hit hard. Johnny Sauter flew in there. And up there it is right there. Yep. Bam. They made contact down low, and that shot that 98 up the racetrack just with this, the same intensity as the 02 had. I, I think somebody made contact with the 02, and that turned him down into Johnny. Oh, trouble back in the pack and into the wall. J.J. Yaley in the 28 gets turned around in the accordion. Tanner Berryhill torn up, Jeffrey Earnhardt. Never checked up. You got to think somebody missed a gear or something right there. Caused that big of a mess right off the start. What a mess. We are green at Phoenix International Raceway. And already damaged. Check it out. John West Townley and others, Ramon Corona, among those that got damaged before we even got the green flag, and already caution on the track. Man, that's that's a huge mistake. There's a the front straightaway is really flat here at Phoenix. You can't see up ahead as well as you would you would hope, but you got to be cautious on this first start. Having a crash like that is nearly unacceptable. John Andretti snuck through. I believe Ward Burton got in the back of the 45 car, Christian Fittipaldi. Jerry got clipped on the right rear. Well, a tough break for him, Jerry. He went a lap down as the caution is now coming out. Boy, just bad timing. Oh, oh and he can not get the wheels on at all. He loses both. Hits one of them himself. The other one goes bounding down the racetrack. It's still bounding, coming down the back stretch. Well, oh, they had apparently break. loosened the tires on the left side and sent him on his way without tightening them. Neil. Now, not quite in that view, but look at this. Watch this hit. I mean, that's rear window deep. And watch the rear springs flying across the racetrack. Folks, you just don't see one hit that hard. He still got trapped a lap down by the pace car. Looked like the tire was up when he went by just a moment ago here on the back stretch, but he called the crew and said, hey, I just flat lost it. Boy, he almost got T-boned on pit road as Hutt pulled in, and that was Patty Moise coming around, trying to exit the pits, and Hutt just trying to get what's left of his battered Smoky Mountain Chew car back behind the wall. Mike Skinner took a wild ride. Oh, he's on fire. Remember, he's got a full load of fuel. They just had that pit stop. Come on, Mike, get out of there, buddy. Same thing Same happened thing to Ron Hornaday. Yeah. 
right there on that blind spot. You know, these guys have got that headrest on the right side. You just can't see in hard in the outside wall. Man, Kenny Schrader just barely squeezed through, and poor old Terry Labonte had nowhere to go. Trunkled debris everywhere. The rest of the drivers thread their way by. And then, flames. That's the pace car, get your lap back, and the spotter, it's up to their responsibility to tell the driver to move down and give room to the lucky dog. And, uh, you know, I don't know, for some reason, you know, Tony didn't know, uh, it's nothing he did, but the communication wasn't there. And uh, I was going along the outside, and he pulled up right in front of me. You know, I, I had to be going a certain amount of speed to catch up to the back of the pack. You can't, you can't go by the... I mean, the right front went down on that car going in the corner, and it shot straight into the wall. Look, you could see the sparks where the wheel was dragging way before he got to the wall. And he's another car that will have to qualify in the top 38, not eligible for a provisional. And he was only 41st quickest, and he has a problem. Leave it pit road. Uh, you know, these tires, when they're cold, they just don't have much grip to them. So he's not even, his warm-up lap has not even got off to a good, good. Goes down the corner, and when we've talked about the right front tire, I guess he cut it down, it goes flat. And we've talked about there's nothing you can do except go straight in the wall. There was the right side window coming out. And this car, folks, we've seen race cars torn up and the body fly off. Of. This car is junk. Wow. Boy, he hit hard, didn't he? Car, but he dropped to the ground, but no caution coming out at this point. But Neil Bonnie's car is off of the racing surface, but you can see there is fire coming from under the hood. Apparently an oil line or a fuel line perhaps broken. He was in a hurry to get out of that car, and his broken bones have only recently healed. Could be that the engine let go in his car. Of course, he's away from the racing surface now. He wants to go back to his race car. And the caution will be coming out now. They put the caution lights on around the racetrack, and the caution is flying at the start finish line. Outside the top 20. Wow, wow, apparently he had a tire let go. Something happened on the right front of that car and it just shot up in the wall. You can see how hard he hit. It really just bashed that right side, the right front in particular. So he's not even, his warm up lap has not even got off to a good, good start. Here's another look right here. Watch, there's Rick right behind Johnny. He gets run into from the 51 of Shane Sieg and then Rick's just trying to get going and drives him. I don't think he's worthy of a black flag right there for rough driving. I really don't. If if that's what it's for, right. I don't think Rick deserves that, that rough driving penalty. Matt Kenseth ran over it. I, I, I saw a blue car run over it, so uh, Kenseth is blue today. And what that's probably a product of, that's the entire exhaust system off of the Foyt car, the 38 car, is you bought them out so bad here in the corners, probably it rubbed the brackets in two and they finally fell off. Matt Kenseth, the 17, ran over it. Looked like J.J. Yaley in the 18 ran over it 32. as well. Jason Leffler in the 32. So three or four cars ran over it. Yeah, there was smoke already before he hit it. Yes, good pick up there, baby. Right. Watch, watch the flames inside the car. That's, that's wow. all the way around him. That's where he jammed the brake zone. Look at the... He is sliding across the grass trying to get out of the car. Got the window net down. And then when he shut it off, the oil had poured out of the tank. And now the fire begins to go away. He decides, I'll stay in the car. See, and, and, and around the... Around the shifter is a rubber boot. And obviously that fire would burn that rubber boot away. I think we're going to start making those things out of asbestos or something. And here again, take a look at the piece uh, that's behind or beneath someone's rental car outside of turn one. That's what came off the front of Morgan Shepard's Cheerwine Ford. That's the harmonic balancer and part of the front pulley assembly off the crank. And you wonder why that one has, someone hasn't picked that up for a souvenir. Number one, it's extremely hot. Watch as the crankshaft in the crankshaft comes out of the car, hits the racetrack, and away it goes. Many, many.
mention during our driver and starting lineup intros that this was his 50th NASCAR Winston Cup race, and it has not been a good one for Mike Skinner, but he's okay. The majority of the pack. Watch how high this thing goes. Whew. Almost oh, wow. climbs over the fence. So. That's Jeff Green that just missed it right there. Just as we were getting ready to go back to green flag race in the 52 of Brad Teague, all of a sudden caught on fire down the backstretch. Yeah, we saw a big fire under the hood off of the 52 car, and he came down the backstretch with a pretty good amount of speed and drove straight to the fire truck. And what let me this, correct it was Kevin LePage. What this probably is is a loose fuel line or an oil line, and we see how the heat is just bubbling the paint right off the hood. That's a tremendous amount of heat. Yeah, he's melting the paint right off of that car. Worker is trying to push him over. The worker just needs one more hand there. Maybe I'll Ugh. go there and help him. Ugh. Now the record's coming there. I'd go to help do it myself, but they're going to get there before I could. He's only about uh, oh, 75 yards from me. Now they're going to get it over there. There oh, we go. Now to get him out going. He'd stay in the lead lap. I was going to say he uh, could very easily get he that said, thing going again. Give me a again. push. Give me a push. See the roof flap goes up and then TJ. Ooh, wow. He had no idea. T.J. Bell had no idea that five was coming up the racetrack. No, he couldn't. He couldn't. Even if he had it, yeah. there wasn't anywhere he could have went. Nothing he could have done. 